I'm proud of each and every one of you. Uh, each of... No, just you, actually. Well, that's depressing. I suppose there might have been more students if they actually called this degree by its proper name. Hello everybody, my name is Freedom Flash and today I'll be giving my rather belated opinion on rock solid friendship. First off, it is my personal headcanon that these two little white bits on Limestone's cutie mark are piles of salt and you will not convince me otherwise. What is that magnesium rich basalt? Rock facts. Magnesium occurs naturally in granite along with iron. However, both are typically found in very small quantities. So if Boulder is indeed magnesium rich, he really is quite a unique rock. By the way, rock facts is going to become a recurring theme in this review. That's actually a really common gem. She's not wrong. Chartreuse basically just means light green. Although the closest I can find to what she's actually holding is gaspeat, which is a pretty rare stone. And actually, while we're talking about this, shouldn't Rarity's talent allowed her to A, find the stone, and B, give her the inclination to know its real value? No? A little consistency would be nice? <laughs> nice touch with the callback. Next! But this place grew out of nowhere after a magical key build gem followed a rainbow and buried itself in the ground! I mean, have you ever seen rocks like this? Yes. I'm sorry, what? Shouldn't you be at least a little interested in the fact that this castle was built by a magic box? Exactly when have you previously encountered semi-arcane structures built out of MacGuffin and poor marketing strategy? Okay, so there might be an entire empire built on that premise, but the question stands! We literally just saw hundreds of them in the gem cave. Okay, so unless we're meant to believe that this cave was made by the Tree of Harmony, that comment doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, look at those rocks! You know, she went crazy a lot faster than I thought she would, which is interesting given that my previous prediction was that she'd be gone by season two. Crazy face number two, please! You know, every day I become more convinced that Pinky is a cephalopod. I'm obviously passionate about exotic rocks. <laughs> I could handle some less exciting rocks if it meant I'd have some pony to talk to besides Boulder. And that, friends, is why I haven't murdered everyone yet. And the winner of the craziest face contest is... Rocks take on different properties when interacting with magic. With the right stone, you could rule all of Equestria if you wanted to. And upon hearing that, everyone starts making conspiracy theories about Celestia, while completely forgetting about this. Seriously, it's been a week and not once have I seen anyone bring this up. Okay, slow down a minute. I really like this detail. It's stuff like this that really helps flesh out characters, just the whole concept here is really attractive to me. I also like the callback that Starlight was apparently dreaming about kites when Pinky woke her up. Why was the pizza excuse necessary again? It's not as if you kept it going for more than three seconds. Another reason I like rocks. They don't exclude you if you're... different than other ponies. Okay, this bit is amazing. It's an almighty beacon of light on Maud's character and really hammers home the point that Maud is unexpressive, not unfeeling. But it's also quite sad. Because at some point, someone pushed her away. It wasn't family, they're far too much a bucket of emojis to have pushed her out. And she's literally the only one in the rock college. I'm struggling to think of when it might have happened, but at some point she's been judged. Repeatedly. For her responsiveness, and that's at least part of what drove her into Ghastly Gorge. They're not bonding! Not with you, no. Where did you even get that? Oh, come on! Hey man, I gotta eat. No, you don't. No, I don't. This was just for fun. I love how Starlight addresses Boulder and not Maud at this bit. She's really picking up fast. Omelette cupcake. Huh. And how many times did you smile like this? Zero times. You're not quite adjusting for Maudism, are you, Pinky? You kinda, sorta in the way. 
you're right. Too harsh. Wait for it. Let's go with you ruined everything all the time. Holy shit. Starlight, that has got to be one of the bluntest, most insensitive comments in the entire show. Minus Trixie. It's like you bumped into someone, apologized, and then decked them in the face. Rock facts. That is quite a find. While Jasper itself is quite common, single color deposits and particularly green Jasper is fairly rare. And you melt my heart more easily than sodium rich plagioclase feldspar. Rock facts. This one is just random, if intricate. Sodium rich plagioclase feldspar is actually a real thing. All right, time for the overarching themes. Ready your flags and grab the edge of your seats. It's time for that old rivalry, introvert versus extrovert. Well, strictly speaking, that's not what the episode's about, but introversion and extroversion are so integral that it's worth discussing here, to me anyway. Maud takes the role of the introvert, and despite the fact that she states that finding ponies she likes is fairly easy, the setup of finding someone who likes her makes for a good way to talk about one of the less discussed topics of introversion. Specifically, I'm referring to the fact that introverts can find some people more draining to be around than others. Certain people just wear us out faster. A concept that translates fairly smoothly into finding someone who gets you. On the other side, we have Pinky, who, as always, is in the role of the extrovert. That's her main problem in this episode. She's so extroverted that she blots out everything else around her. Starlight and Morb can't bridge the gap between them with Pinky around because she fills that gap. There's just no space to do anything. However, both personality types are problematic in this episode because while extroversion is the main conflict, introversion almost turns Maud into a hermit. And speaking of, what in the seven seals of Tartarus makes you think that the local rock strata here makes it worth braving the Quare eels? Your choice is a Ponyville or a death trap. I'll admit, there's not much of a difference there, but at least in Ponyville you get some warning about whatever's currently trying to kill you. Potential dismemberment aside, I'm really glad that Maud's moving to Ponyville. Over recent episodes, there seems to have been a trend of bringing back old characters and giving them a more permanent fixture, which I hope will continue in future episodes. Well, I've been Freedom Flash, and thanks for watching.